win in the series. But an overnight rain delay took the fight out of the Tigers. And Oklahoma State came from behind to win it and put LSU in the loser's... forward to a second straight win in the series but an overnight rain delay took the fight out of the tigers and oklahoma state came from behind to win it and put lsu in the losers bracket where the tigers will have to bounce back in an elimination game with arkansas the razorbacks showed they could come back facing elimination as they trailed georgia arkansas called on the injured randy bob playing with a broken bone in his hand he had a three-run home run that kept the razorbacks in the world series arkansas coming off a win meets lsu coming off a loss in an elimination game in game nine of the college world series today From Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska, it's Game 9 of the NCAA College World Series. The Fighting Tigers of LSU against the Razorbacks from Arkansas. The Diet Coke pregame show is being brought to you by Diet Coke. You're going to drink it just for the taste of it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a windy Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska. The LSU Tigers taking on a very fine club from Arkansas. And this is Elimination Day, the second Elimination Day of the NCAA College World Series. We begin the day with six teams, but by the end of the evening, we'll be all the way down to the Final Four. And the Tigers will truly have to rebound because they had a 6-2 lead when we picked up suspended play yesterday, only to find themselves an 8-7 loser to Oklahoma State. Arkansas, on the other hand, a well-rested club. After beating Georgia 5-4 the other night, they had a day's rest in preparation for this game. They've also gotten some help from Randy Bob. They got that help big time in their victory against Georgia. Randy Bob means a great deal to this team. He was injured early on. Well, it was down in the conference tournament down in Austin. We were playing Houston, and uh, I was, uh, you know, batting, and they've been working me inside a lot this year. I've been having little problems with inside pitch, and the pitcher was just trying to go in on me, and his ball ran up and in. And I guess my reflexes are a little slow being a first baseman. I don't have real quick reflexes, I guess. But anyway, the ball just ran in and hit my hand. Out of the lineup for the regional, his teammates took it upon themselves to make it to Omaha so he'd have a chance to return. Everybody wanted Randy, a chance for Randy to get in the postseason play. And uh, we, knew, we knew the only chance he'd, he'd be able to play is if we got to World Series. So everybody, you know, it was in the back of everybody's line. You know, we all wanted to do good getting back with us to Omaha. Well, he's been a, a kind of a mainstay, a steady type guy in our lineup all year. He's batted in the two hole. Randy Bob's a type of hitter that hits all kinds of pitching, hits uh, good pitching, bad pitching, hits breaking balls, fastball, kind of an alley to the alley type guy that uh, uh, can uh, hit and run. He does make contact. So it took something away from us. Plus, he's played a steady first base, and uh, we're just glad to have him back right now. He's back all right. Take game six against Georgia as an example. A couple of hits, four RBIs, three of them right here with this shot to left center field. It helped lead Arkansas past Georgia. Well, it's all kind of been a, a kind of a dream, you know, for the team to win it and go to Omaha. I think everybody on the team could say that. You know, we've tried to keep a good attitude, try not to get too high or too low. And that's what I tried to do. When I was at home, I tried to try not to get too down or, or get too pumped when the team would win. I'd just try to keep a good attitude and stay positive. But, you know, you can't get too excited and you can't get too depressed. I think you try to have to find that even keel, and that's that's one of the keys to baseball because some of it, so much of it is mental and emotional. You have to kind of keep yourself under control and not, get, not let everything get to you. We've already seen Arkansas in this tournament without Bob. They were bombed. We've seen them with Randy Bob, and they won. But he will not be in the infield at first base today. He'll have to play the designated hitter role again. We'll have more on Game 9 between the Tigers and Razorbacks when we return. All right, all right, where are they? Uh, who, 
The two chicks who ordered the Diet Cokes. Oh, the ones with the funny swimsuits? You know, Arthur, I think they like us. Oh, really? Uh, why? Why? This is the third Diet Coke they've ordered today. Oops, there they are. Uh, straighten your bow tie. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, hello, hello, hello. Diet Coke with 100% NutraSweet. One calorie, just for the taste of it. Boy, they sure look good in tail. Yeah, of course, uh, so do we. <laughs> Cute, yeah. Welcome back to Omaha, Nebraska. Today, a pair of left-handers on the mound for the Razorbacks and the LSU Tigers. And, uh, you know, I used to throw a roundhouse curve myself from the left side, and Jim Cott's been talking about it all along. You can see a lot of guys wearing their hats just like this. Right, Sam Rosen and Jim Cott? <laughs> Thanks, Tim, and that could be the key to today's game. This is a Jim Cott special, two lefties on the mound. I love it. <laughs> Now, the lefty for Arkansas, Sebahar, has got to come back from a real bad performance against Texas. Well, he pitched very tentatively in that game, and he's going to have to challenge the hitters. You can see what his results were against the Longhorns in that first game. For John to be more effective, he's got to get ahead of the hitters and display a little better control. He averages over five walks a game. That can be costly. Arkansas, the offense will have to get going despite the fact they've got two key men in the middle of the batting order. Jim Kramer's number three, Andy Skeel's number four, both left-handed hitters. They've got a tough job going against Greg Patterson, who was outstanding against Florida State. Well, most of the time you'd think a left-hander would equalize, neutralize the left-hand hitters. There you get a look at how Greg Patterson has been pitching. Hasn't walked a man in over 19 innings. He only averages over one walk per nine. Great control of his curveball, but despite their differences in control. Both these guys have great records. All right, so the key to today's matchup is who has the cap tip the most, is that right? Yeah, whichever one's got it cocked like Tim had it there, that's the one to favor. <laughs> All right, the lefties <laughs> on the mound. Arkansas is coming off a win. LSU will have to bounce back off a loss. We'll be back in just a few moments. Right now, let's go back to Tim Brando. All right, Sam, thank you very much. A windy day here for Skip Bertman. And we had a lot of wind here yesterday, Coach. It's going to be difficult fielding those high fly balls, as Rob Hart, we found out. Right. This is a swirling wind here at uh, this stadium, reminiscent of Candlestick Park yeah. and the Bigs. Any pop-up today should be uh, stayed with by all the fielders until somebody is really certain. You say this is going to be an emotional game. I, this has to be difficult for your club to come back after the kind of loss they had yesterday. We had a lot of emotion used up in the first two a game, a game and a half. And then after Bean Blossom got a base hit and Ortiz, I kind of, we kind of deflated a little bit. We've got to regroup, start our engines again, and get going. Arkansas, on the other hand, is in the same boat, but not having played yesterday, they've got a day off. These clubs are remarkably similar statistically, Coach, but if you have one advantage, I would think it would be your overall pitching depth coming into this game, though you did lose, use four pitchers yesterday. Right. We, uh, we, pitching depth we, we, uh, is important, but at this stage of the tournament, it hasn't uh, come, in, come up to pass yet. Uh, Patterson's got to pitch well for us. Uh, if we have to go to number two, three, or four, I think we'll be in trouble. All right, Skipper, thanks again for joining us. Thank you. The head coach of the LSU Tigers, who now must take on the Hogs from Arkansas on Elimination Day at the College World Series. The Diet Coke pregame show is brought to you by Diet Coke. You're going to drink it just for the taste of it. an elimination game between the Razorbacks of Arkansas and the Tigers of LSU. Let's take a look at the Arkansas lineup, brought to you by Wilson, the official ball of the NCAA championship. The Razorbacks are coached by Norm DeBryan in his 18th season. He finished second in 1979 and third in 1985. 
Leading off, the left fielder, Dan Campbell, a junior. He's hitting 351 and leads the team with 26 stolen bases. Batting second, Randy Bob, the designated hitter, a junior. He went two for three with four RBIs against Georgia. Batting third, the right fielder, Jim Kramer, a junior. He's five for nine thus far in the series. Batting fourth, the catcher, Andy Skeels, a senior. He's tied for the team lead with 76 RBIs. Batting fifth, the second baseman, Kelly Zane, a junior. He's hitting 336. Batting sixth, the first baseman, Troy Eklund, hitting 289 with 12 home runs. Batting seventh, the shortstop, Mike Sisko, a senior. He's hitting 343, one for eight thus far in the series. Batting eighth, the third baseman, Don Thomas, a sophomore. He's hitting 298. And batting ninth, the center fielder, Rod Moore, a senior, hitting 261, but he's four for eight thus far in the series. And defensively for the Fighting Tigers, Rob Hartwig in left, Mike Papa John in center, and over in right, Jack Voigt. In the infield, Richie Vasquez at third, Dave Cunningham the shortstop, Andy Gailey at second, and over at first, Pete Bush. Behind the plate, Craig Faulkner, and on the mound, the big left-hander we talked about, 6'3", 210, same dimensions as his opponent, John Sibahar. That's Greg Patterson. You see his numbers. In 1987, tremendous control, and that's one of the keys to the day's game is which of these left-handers, in Patterson's case, continued to, to display the good control. Sieberhaar has got to find it. Patterson won two games in the regional, both complete game victories, and defeated Florida State in game two of the College World Series when he pitched nine and a third innings. He's been outstanding in postseason play. Dan Campbell, the left fielder, leads off for Arkansas. Takes a breaking pitch inside. Vasquez, the third baseman, even with the bag and creeping in on the infield grass, respecting the speed of Campbell, a good punter. Fastball stays over the inside corner for a strike. Dan Campbell, who's got good speed as a junior from Palos Verdes, California. 51 batting average. 26 stolen bases and the threat to run on his own if he gets on. Haven't been too many home runs thus far in the College World Series in this big ballpark. 343 down the lines, 370 in the alleys, and 420 to straightaway center. Six home runs thus far in the first eight games of this College World Series. Breaking pitch in the dirt. Count is two and two on the leadoff man, Dan Campbell. Randy Crystal calling balls and strikes today. Jim Garman, the umpire at first, Bob Nelson at second, and John Bible is at third base. Bible has been the home plate umpire in LSU's first two games. Curveball is inside. The count is full on Dan Campbell. Norm DeBryan's got him at the top of the lineup to try to do this. Either draw a walk, get on base, because he's a great base stealer. He can make him go. Campbell platoons with Scott Pose. Both players have good speed. Pose will be in there usually against right-handers. Fastball inside. And a rare occurrence for Greg Patterson. How about that? We talk about Greg Patterson's great control. And the first thing he does is walk the leadoff hitter. That's his first walk in over two complete ball games. We'll check the baselines for Arkansas and their coaches. Dave Van Horn is at first. Doug Clark is at third. And look across to Norm DeBryan in the first base dugout for the signs. And here is Randy Bob, and the big hero of the win over Georgia in game six of the World Series on Sunday night. Arkansas has had two nights off. Randy Bob, an outstanding season. 385 hitter missed a couple of weeks with a broken bone in his left hand still not ready to play first base but is in as the DH he's from Broken Arrow Oklahoma Broken Arrow must be down the road from Big Cabin where Ralph Terry was from see that figure Arkansas with a leadoff man on Patterson's got an excellent move to first base well, he's picked six guys off. He doesn't deliver the ball very quickly to home plate, but here's a look at the pickoff moves. He picks that leg straight up. Much more difficult for the runner to read it. Runner fakes going, and Bob faked the bunt. Count is one and one. 
Nobody out, a runner at first. Campbell with the lamp black with the uh, sun peeking in and out right now. Campbell goes, pitch is swung on a miss. The throw down is good and he's out. out. Real good throw by the catcher. Craig Faulkner throws out Campbell trying to steal. Well, throwing out base runners is a two-man deal, Sam. Pitcher and catcher. We've talked about the pitcher's inability to hold guys on. There you saw Patterson's leg kick, which froze Campbell for just an instant. Gave Craig Faulkner a chance to throw him and get him easily. Throw him out easily. Only the fifth time this season Campbell's been thrown out trying to steal. 1-2 to Bob on the ground. Two hops to short. Dave Cunningham. Cross the feet push. Two men down. Cunningham. Almost uh, too many letters to get on his shirt. The thing it wasn't, it isn't Mick Cunningham. He'd be in trouble. <laughs> Dick Berkman, the head coach at LSU, he gives all the signs. He also chews a lot of bubble gum. Not only calls the pitch, but calls the location with those signs, giving them to Craig Faulkner. And here is Jim Kramers, who has been simply outstanding at the bat, five for nine. Thus far in the World Series for Arkansas, Kramer's a junior from North Little Rock, 20 years old. He's tied the Arkansas record for base hits with 93. Record he now shares with Jeff King. Curveball down low. Count is two and one on Jim Kramer's. Had five RBIs in the game against Texas in which Arkansas lost 13 to 6. Fastball up high. Yeah. For those three and one. Excuse me Sam for those fans that missed seeing Greg Patterson in his first appearance in the College World Series I made reference to the fact he looks like he could be Woody Fryman's younger brother. <laughs> I said the other night Woody Fryman if you're watching this is what you looked like when you were 20 years old. Fastball on the outside corner at the knees and the count is full on Kramers. Kramers had the game winning base hit against Georgia in the bottom of the ninth. Didn't hit it hard. Little looper in the center field. And it drove in the winning run for the 5 4 come from behind lane. Struck him out on a curveball. Walker digs it out of the dirt, throws down the bush, and the sides retired. So Patterson gets Arkansas, gave up a walk, and retires the side. Let's take a look at the LSU lineup, brought to you by Wilson, the official ball of the NCAA championship. The Tigers of LSU are coached by Skip Berkman. In his fourth year, this is his second College World Series. Leading off the second baseman, Andy Gailey, a junior. He's hitting 276 and has a school record 74 walks this season. Batting second, the shortstop, Dave Cunningham, a junior. He's hitting 291. Batting third, the right fielder, Jack Boyd, a junior. He has three extra base hits and two RBIs thus far in the series. Batting fourth, the catcher, Craig Faulkner, a senior. He's hitting 340. Batting fifth, the first baseman, Pete Bush, a sophomore. He's three for eight with two RBIs thus far in the series. Batting sixth, the third baseman, Richie Vasquez, hitting 289 with 16 doubles. Batting seventh, the designated hitter, Terry Bell, a junior. He's hitting 298 with eight home runs. Batting eighth, the center fielder, Mike Papa John, a senior. He's hitting 251, has 18 stolen bases. And batting ninth, the left fielder, Rob Hartwick, a senior. He's the leading runner on the team. He's stolen 41 bases. And defensively, the Razorbacks line up like this. Dan Campbell in left, Rod Moore in center, and Jim Kramer's in right. On the infield, it's Don Thomas at third. Mike Sisko, the shortstop. Kelly Zane at second. Troy Eklund at first. Behind the plate, Andy Skeels, and on the mound, the other big left-hander, John Sibahar, once again at 6'3", 210. You see his record. He had a rough outing against Texas. Walked too many men, pitched very defensively. Coach Norm DeBryan and Andy Skeels both feel that Sibahar will be much sharper, much more aggressive today. He'll have to be. A junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma, John Sibahar, 11-1 this season. The ERA will over the four mark. But... Uh, I think he was very tight and very nervous in that first game that he pitched game three of the College World Series. Down the baselines, coaching for LSU. Cliff Deese is at first, and Smoke Laval. LSU trying to bounce back 
from the 8-7 to seven loss at the hands of Oklahoma State, a game that started Monday night, was suspended because of rain, completed yesterday afternoon. Oklahoma State, an outstanding comeback. Great pitching by Marv Rockman, who was outstanding in seven innings, and shut the door on LSU, just completely bottled up the hitters, and that really turned the game around for Oklahoma State. Andy Gailey, a junior from New Orleans, Real good eye, set an LSU record this year with 74 bases on balls. Yeah, Skip Berkman said instead of criticizing his hitters, all the credit should go to Marv Rockman. He just plain shut them down, didn't give them anything. Down is one and two, and already just looking at the first couple of pitches, Sibahar looks a lot more relaxed than he did Saturday afternoon against Texas. Well, I think sometimes we, we talk about the scouting reports and the way uh, college pitchers try to pitch to certain areas. Sometimes that can be overdone. You get into a, a rut where you're too tentative, and that's what Sibahar was in his last start. Ahead one and two on Andy Gailey. Struck him out with a fastball. That's a sign of a change in attitude right there, Sam. Now, look, this is just your basic fastball right down the middle, but... If you throw a pitch with conviction and say, hey, man, I'm going to make you hit it. I'm not going to let you hit it. There's a big difference in that kind of thinking. Here's Dave Cunningham. A little shortstop from Sacramento. A junior. No pitch. Time was called. Cunningham, a 291 hitter this season. They made the all-tournament team in the South 2 Regional when he hit 333 in the Regional. Thus far, one for eight in the College World Series. He scored four runs. Fastball down low. They don't have the batting average that Arkansas does. They're hitting just 254 coming into the series. Arkansas over 300, but they've stolen a, a few more bases, four out of six. The Razorbacks still looking for their first stolen base. Pitch foul back, but opponents of LSU are only hitting 236 indicative of the fine pitching staff that LSU has yesterday they used up most of it in trying to stop Oklahoma State Norm DeBryan in the middle of that group looking straight at you 18 years head coach at Arkansas this is his third College World Series 1985 last time Arkansas was here they finished third in the series Texas was second, and the Hurricanes of Miami won the national championship in 85. They are not here this year. Eliminated in the Atlantic Regional, which was won by Florida State. Arizona, the defending national champions. Randy Bob mentioned in the little feature before the game about the, the mental part of the game, the emotional part, and that's going to be one of the tests for LSU today. As soon as Brad Beanblossom got that single yesterday, the air kind of went out of their balloon. They had that 6-2 lead. See Bahar with a long look at Andy Skeels. 2-2. Low and inside. Count is full. Just to bring fans up to date, the suspended game, LSU came into it with a 6-2 lead. Two runners on and two out. And Brad Beanblossom from Oklahoma State got a base hit to keep the rally alive. And before you know it, the Tigers were down 7-6. Off-speed pitch, good play by Sibahar. Throws him out. Sibahar fell off a little to his left, but reached back nicely with a glove hand to make the stab on the comebacker. And there are two men out in the bottom half of the first inning. The early arrivals here at Rosenblatt Stadium. Crowd should fill up the second game. Tonight, Florida State and Texas. Another elimination game, and what a game that should be. Richie Lewis. American right-hander for Florida State will be going against Mark Petkaisek for Texas. Petkaisek pitched very well against Arkansas in game three of the series. This is Jack Voigt. Tied an NCAA World Series record with two triples. See that Venice, Florida, Sam. Both Faulkner and Voigt from Venice, Florida, right outside of Sarasota down there along the Gulf Coast. Jack Boyd, a junior, hitting 289. Good power with 15 home runs thus far. Four for 10 in the series and one double, two triples in the four hits. Line to right.
right center field will be in there for a base hit. Moore going over to cut it off. Gets there. Voigt's on his way to two. Here's the throw, and Voigt is in there. Never stopped. Jack Voigt with good speed, never hesitated. Moore did well in center field to get over to cut that ball off, but good speed by Jack Voigt legs it into a double. Well, the way you get two base hits, you see Jack Voigt, as soon as he hits the ball, explode out of the box. You look at the swing right there. See right there, he's not letting up at all. That's how you get a two base hit. When you leave the box kind of three quarter speed and then try to make up for it, you get thrown out on a play like that. But Voigt went hard right from the start, picked up a double. His fifth hit of the series and his fourth extra base hit. The big guy, Craig Faulkner, the catcher, hits it on the ground to third. Don Thomas takes it, throws across. And the side's retired. So Arkansas gets out of it. There's no score. Boyd doubles with two outs, but he's left stranded. We go to the second. Paid for each other makes your June entertainment. HBO Movies, the best and the brightest. Exclusive HBO Pictures. HBO Originals, big event music, big name comedy, big deal series. HBO Sports, legends in their own time. Add Max for the most movie exclusive. Star salutes, the wettest laughs on TV. Added up, two great channels, 185 different choices. Call your cable operator and ask for the HBO Cinemax combo. I don't even want to talk about this used car. It's used, all right. It's all used up. I'm... If the best thing you can say about your last used car is bleep, then come to Toyota of Easley. Before we sell any used car, we service the bleep out of it. If we're still not satisfied, we wholesale it to our competition to sell to their customers. We'll give a little more, take a little less at Toyota of Easley. Bypass 123 in Easley. Fast action and determined spirit make it one of America's fastest growing sports. Feel the excitement of the major indoor soccer league playoffs Saturday and Sunday at 4 Eastern on ESPN. The winner of this game will play again on Friday night. The loser will be out of the tournament. Uh, that's a way to have a good time. That fan will be in the tournament regardless of who <laughs> wins this game. They'll stay for the whole thing. Fine fans from Arkansas. For the Razorbacks, number 15. Razorback hats. Some Texas fans here early. The Longhorns will arrive at the ballpark in a couple of hours to take on Florida State. Longhorns had a tough one last night. Stanford played an outstanding game in beating Texas 6 to 1. And that'll be an elimination game tonight. Tomorrow night, winner's bracket game. Oklahoma State and Stanford with the winner of that game guaranteed a spot in the championship game. This guy's an interesting story, Sam. Andy Skeels, father's a Rhodes Scholar. I wonder he's a catcher. <laughs> Andy Skeels pops it high in the air, short center field. Cunningham and Gailey go out. Gailey, the second baseman, makes the call and makes the catch. Haley's been outstanding defensively for LSU. Hasn't made an error in his last 30 chances. That's the, the strong suits for LSU. Pitching in defense, Gailey and Cunningham at second and short are good examples of it. They're consistent. Here's Kelly Zane, junior from Wichita, Kansas, the second baseman. In 336 this season, 24 doubles. Scored 60 runs. Back in Wichita, he's a part-time chef. Understand, he's a great Italian food chef. Introduce him to Toy Cook. <laughs> <laughs> Fouled off and out of play. He was the MVP in the regional tournament. Now DeBryan has dropped him down into the five spot because he's he's been one of their most uh, productive hitters in postseason play. That's where you hope you've got men on. Well, I guess he figures he's got the big hitters, three and four, Kramers and Skeels are left-handers, and one of those two can get on, and he's got Zane, a right-handed batter, followed by Eklund, the DH, a right-handed batter. And Brian, the head man, studying this situation. 
Patterson with a curveball bounced foul. Count is one and two. One man out here in the top half of the second inning. Arkansas and LSU. Command of the breaking ball is what Greg Patterson has to have to be effective, and most of the time he does. There's a good example of it. Runs that in on the hands of the right-hand hitter. Curveball foul down the third base line. Count stays one and two on Kelly Zane. One thing about Arkansas this season, they've used a lot of different lineups. Randy Bob has normally been the number two hitter when he was healthy. When he went out injured, the shakeup uh, had to be made, and Zane went into the number two spot and responded well. Fastball foul back over the roof. Souvenir outside the ballpark. Count remains one and two. Zane has got some power. He's hit nine home runs this season. Calm on the Arkansas bench. Like Randy Bob says, they're keeping an even keel. Full curve hit high and deep to left center field. Hardway going back. Still going. He's there and makes the catch. Long way to go for the left fielder, but he's got good speed. Rob Hardwick got back there and handled the wind pretty well, which is blowing across from left to right. I said to Skip Bertman before the game, I said, well, your ball club has one day's experience with the different wind here at Omaha. There you see Hartwick actually had to go back on that ball because of the fact he was playing so shallow. Yesterday, he got burned. He went back to the warning track, and the ball dropped about 20 feet ahead of it. So they've, they've adjusted to the wind here. Here's the designated hitter, Troy Eklund, making the first baseman. Randy Bob is in as the DH. Sophomore from Kansas City. In 289. 25 extra base hits this year for Troy Eklund, including 12 home runs. Good fastball from Patterson. Patterson, after a surprise walk in the first inning, has gotten back on keel, pitching ahead of the hitters. Love that left-handed cap. Way down and tilt it to the right. Good slider. Troy Eklund. Two for eight thus far. There what it do you is, think, Jim. Classic left-handed cap from Gonzalez, Louisiana. Two wins, two complete games in the South 2 Regional, which was played in New Orleans. Tough breaking pitch that Eklund stays off. How'd you wear your hat, big fella? It was uh, crooked one way or another, I'll guarantee <laughs> you that. <laughs> I think it had a little tilt toward third base like that. Two two. Oh, down the third base side. Lefties don't care about looking good on camera, Jay. Hey, no, it's not a fashion show out there. No. <laughs> Throw strikes, get them out, dress up after the game. Forget about <laughs> looking good during the game. 2-2 to Eklund. Popped up in the short right field. Gailey lets it go for the right fielder. And it's put away by Jim Kramers. The side's retired. Excuse me, that's not Kramers. That's the LSU right fielder. The side's retired. We go to the bottom half of the second inning. No score. There he is. What a happening dude. There's a super party animal. Yeah. His name is Fugs McKenzie. A barbecue inside. Do -do -do, a barbecue. And a cold Bud Light. A cold Bud Light. Puts him in a party frenzy. In a party frenzy. He's Fugs McKenzie. Bud Light's original party animal. Go Fugs, go. Go Fugs, go. Fugs, go. Fugs, you really took a nap. All right. You ever heard of race car drivers running with the family car oil? These do. Winners like Jeff and Brett Bodine, Tim Richmond, and Daryl Walter. They use the same new Superflow 10W30 motor oil you can buy in stores. It has a special additive wear band that's super at block and wear. Right, guys? Right! Good catch! You play football! No! Too dangerous! Want your engine to last? Go with the flow. New Superflow. ESPN's live presentation of the 1987 NCAA College World Series is being brought to you by Bud Light. The light beer with the first name and taste. Everything else is just a light. By Exxon. Quality you can count on. And by Diet Coke. You're going to drink it just for the taste of it. Ooh, love.
love that card. Look at oh, how he wore that man. cap. Is that great, huh? Wow, I didn't know Robert Redford played baseball. <laughs> the natural. That baby's worth about 47 cents these days. Big guy, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, they're yawning. I don't blame you. I'd yawn if I saw that card, too. <laughs> well, yeah, that's short hair, then. Huh, yeah, the styles were a bit different. <laughs> And I wasn't in the service either. Here's Pete Bush. You talk about cards. I bet he's got that card. Pete Bush is a great card collector. Fastball for a strike. You say Sibahar. He had over 25,000 baseball cards. That's a big hobby nowadays. Big business nowadays. Fastball swung on and missed. Bush is three for eight thus far in the series. Two RBIs, two runs scored. As you mentioned, Sam Sibahar already a much different pitcher than we saw in his first start. Much more aggressive. You see the leg kick straight toward the target and on target with that fastball so far. Ahead of Bush, 0-2. Pete Bush played with a hurt hand early in the season. That really affected him to start to come on, batting 313 this season. As we mentioned, uh, he's a great baseball card collection missing his brother's graduation from NI MIT during this College World Series then again his brother may be missing the College World Series hopefully he's watching it up in Boston Massachusetts well, you hear about guys that do everything including the sing the national anthem that's one of his hobbies <laughs> he's an accomplished singer Pete Bush might get him to sing the national anthem here if the Tigers stick around in the tournament down is one and two. Sibahar's fastball just low. Skeel set up on the outside corner, and Sibahar hit the target real well. Just missed it low. Skeels has interesting strategy and good strategy for a catcher. He says, I'll sneak to that outside corner. If the umpire's giving me that pitch, I keep edging out. 2-2 pitch. Went inside. Boy, handcuffed Bush on that one. Hey, you hear the expression, get in his kitchen. That's what they call the players say right there. That area up and in, that's in the kitchen. Now, if you get it out over the plate where they can handle it, that's the living room. <laughs> that pinch right there, that's the way you want to work left-hand hitters, is run that baby up in the kitchen like Sibahar did right there. Count is two and two on Pete Bush, the sophomore first baseman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Just missed off the outside corner. Sibahar looks nice and relaxed today, Jim, as opposed to Saturday afternoon. Much different. I'm sure he was very tight that first College World Series to the start, as a lot of the guys were. Check swing. Tap back to the mound. Sibahar. Direct one, one man out. Good pitch. Three and two from John Sebahar. We talked about Andy Skeel, Sam. See where he's sitting way outside there? Uh, he really exaggerates sitting, but what he'll do is if the umpire is giving the pitch that far outside the, you know, right on the outside edge, which we've talked about, the umpires have been very generous with the strike zone in the College World Series. He'll continue to take as much as he can get. Then uh, make that Richie Vasquez. Flies it to right field. Kramer's right there. Two men down. Vasquez hitting the first pitch. Now three for eight in the College World Series. Freeway Vasquez. <laughs> That's what they call him. He hit a home run one time out on the freeway. Got the nickname. <laughs> Here's Terry Bell. Brother of Joey Bell, who is not playing in the College World Series, and that, of course, a big story for LSU. The, the leading hitter, home run hitter, and RBI man, Joey Bell, disciplined for uh, temper flare-ups and suspended by Coach Skip Kortman through the regional and the College World Series. Terry Bell in his DH. Junior from Shreveport, Louisiana. You play video games? Oh. I like him. He's got the sky right here. Terry Bell's got the record on the gauntlet machine at the Holiday Inn. How about that? Bad. 
understand he also collects matchbooks. I did that when I was did a you? kid. Yeah, my father would make trips around uh, southwestern Michigan, bring back matchbooks from different places. Count is one and two on Terry Bell. Two men out, bottom half of the second inning. LSU and Arkansas are scoreless. The loser will be out of the World Series. The winner plays again on Friday night. Don't forget tomorrow night, a single game. Winner's bracket game, Oklahoma State. 2-0 and oh, will go with Pat Hope, their ace right-hander. And Jack McDowell, All-American right-hander for Stanford, will go in that one. And we'll have it for you at 8 o'clock Eastern time right here on ESPN. The winner of that game will be guaranteed a spot in the championship round. Down is 2-2 two two on Terry Bell. Eight home runs this season. He's got some power. Has 37 hits this season, 16 extra base hits. Surprised they haven't thrown him a curve yet. He doesn't handle a breaking ball very well. Just got a piece of the fastball. He's got a good swing. Looking for a pitch he can pull. Campbell in left field is not too deep with the wind blowing across. Ball doesn't figure to carry well to left field. Wind blowing 16 miles per hour, gusting to 25. Changeup misses outside, and the count is full on Terry Bell. See how shallow Campbell is in left. Moore is straight away in center, and Kramer is straight away and a little deeper in right field. Full count pitch, and he fouls it back. You're right, Jim. He's been throwing uh, fastballs, a straight change. There's the wind. Watch the wind. I can't see it. Yeah, that's right. That's what Danny Ozark, when he managed the Phillies, he'd say, hey, watch the wind today. We'd stand outside the dog and say, you can't see the wind. All you can do is feel it. You can't watch the wind. 3-2 <laughs> in the dirt, and Bell works a walk. So a two-out walk to Terry Bell. Surprised the way he pitched Bell? Well, I am. We've seen the right-handers work to Terry Bell and throw him a lot of breaking balls. And right there, I think maybe early in the game, Andy Skeels and, and Sibahar are trying to establish control of that fastball. Prove to the hitter you can get that fastball in and work the curve in occasionally. Patterson's just the opposite. Number eight hitter in the order, Mike Papajohn, who once again makes the all-name team in the College World Series. Senior from Birmingham, Alabama, Mike Papa John, played in the World Series last year. Doesn't hit all that well. Comes in with a 251 batting average, but has good speed. And hitting 316 against left-handers this year. Now, Sibahar is just missing. Two men out, a runner at first here in the bottom half of the second inning. Terry Bell with a short lead on Sibahar. Fastball is down low. Down is 3 0. Oh. Now he's starting to aim at what we call uh, aim the ball. You say, well, what is aiming the ball? Well, you hold on to it a little tighter, a little longer, and just sort of try to steer it over the plate, and that's what happens. It ends up in the dirt. And that one's over. Papa John with a look down to smoke Laval for the signs. Let's see if LSU puts anything on. Count of three and one. Hitters pitch. Bell with pretty good speed isn't running. Count is full as Papa John took a fastball right down the middle. A down in the order. They're going to take a lot of pitches. Try to force him to throw strikes. If you were a a three hole hitter or a cleanup hitter you'd be hacking at that pitch now Bell will be running the first baseman Eklund has moved in behind him to get in a good fielding position Bell goes the pitch is taken for strike three so Sibahar comes back from a 3 0 count and strikes out Papa John by throwing three fastballs for strikes end of two game nine there's no score.
Kings for showing Major League form, but the minor league charcoal was stuck on warm. Finally, old lefty threw down his hat and said, when you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. I take a Kingsford view about barbecue. When you're hot, you're hot. Kingsford charcoal is made with premium wood char. Kingsford burns hot when some others might not. Said, pay attention, son. Let me show you how it's done. When you're hot, you're hot. He said, thanks a lot. When you're hot, you're hot. Explosive. Get the biggest stories from the fastest tracks with Bob Jenkins and Larry Newber host ESPN Speed Week. Thursday nights at 7.30 Eastern, only on ESPN. Here's how the College World Series is done. Oklahoma State won, LSU won, Texas won in the first round. In game four, Stanford won. For the losers bracket, Florida State eliminated Arizona State and Arkansas eliminated Georgia. And then in game seven, Oklahoma State came from behind to win. Stanford won game eight last night. Those are the only undefeated teams remaining in the tournament. They'll meet tomorrow night. And we've got an elimination doubleheader this afternoon and tonight. And after tonight's play, just four teams will remain in the 1987 NCAA College World Series. Here's the shortstop, Mike Sisko, in at 343. That's number seven in the order. Sisko. Well, as Joe Morgan pointed out the other night, he's right close to Will Belke's hometown, right outside of St. Louis there, De Pere, Missouri. Senior, he's 21 years old. Will Belke, one of our producers, along with Fred Gadelli, who's producing this afternoon's game. Will Belke will produce tonight's game between Florida State and Texas. Scheduled for 8 o'clock Eastern time. Hope you'll be with us for that one. Should be a real good one. Florida State with Richie Lewis, our throwing right-hander against Mark Petkaisek for Texas. Count as one and two on Cisco. Fastball foul back. The Cisco kid. Those glasses don't make him look like a ball player. Make him look like a professor. It's like, remember Bob Dillinger, one of the first baseball players to wear glasses, third baseman of the old St. Louis Brownies. Cisco's from St. Louis. Fouls it back. Count stays one and two. Take a look from the third base stands. Pitches in the dirt, low and inside. Cisco is the only returning infield starter this year for Arkansas. Hit 289 in 1986. He was drafted by Houston and Detroit in 1985. Hit in the air down the right field side. Slicing in a foul territory. Boy tripped and missed. He tripped over the mound in the bullpen. Jack Boyd giving it a big try. Almost caught it. Despite falling down over the mound in right field. It's okay. Well, it's something that has changed uh, in, the, say, the past 15 years, Sam. You see Boyd right there trip over the mound. Years ago, the bullpens were always out behind the outfield fence. Now, in recent years, I think and one of the reasons is to give fans an opportunity to watch the relief pitchers warm up. But it is a hazard for the outfielders, as you see on plays like that. Talk about a study in concentration. Despite falling down, he almost caught that ball. 2-2 to Cisco. Fastball. Ball strike three. Cisco is set down on strikes by Greg Patterson. One man out. We're in the top half of the third inning. Well, like Papa John to end the second inning and now you see Cisco a lot of the hitters taking pitches today playing soldier boy keeping that rifle on their shoulder can't get any hits that way brings up Don Thomas the sophomore third baseman 18 years old Don Thomas from Pine Bluff Arkansas started in the outfield last season drafted by the Dodgers out of high school this is his second year at Arkansas count as one and one I guess we should mention that Greg Patterson, you mentioned drafted. Greg Patterson drafted in the third round by the Chicago Cubs. And John Sibahar, like many young players here, still waiting to find out if he was drafted. 1-1 one, one pitch foul back. Don 
Ryan Thomas. Look at Skip Bergman, the LSU coach. He's got to like what he sees from his left hand thus far. Calling the signals from the catcher, Craig Faulkner. Calls the pitches and the location. Fastball popped up. Short right field. Andy Gailey, the second baseman, goes back. Called off by Voigt, the right fielder. And he gets the put out after all. Two men down here in the top half of the third inning. Like to see outfielders play shallow in the opposite field. You've got a hitter like Thomas, not good power to the opposite field. Look where Voigt playing very shallow was able to come in and handle that ball easily. Here's Rod Moore, the number nine hitter, senior center fielder from Oklahoma City. Takes the fastball right down the middle. Moore not hitting well coming into the series for the season, a 250 batting average, but has really picked it up here in the World Series. His four for eight lifted his overall batting average to 261. Pitch in the dirt. Bounced off the glove of Faulkner. Count as one and one. Rod Moore scored two runs. He scored the game winning run in the win Sunday night over Georgia. In the bottom half of the ninth inning, Arkansas rallied from a 4 1 deficit. Three run home run by Randy Bob tied it. And then a base hit by Jim Kramers in the bottom of the ninth off Chris Carpenter drove in Rod Moore with a winning run. 2 1 pitch. On the ground a second. Gailey handles it easily. And the side's retired. Patterson has faced the minimum nine batters through three innings. Arkansas has had only a walk through three. There's no score. Look up my watch, it was 931, so I called my baby. She led that and fun and we rode. Right now, it's rock and rebate time at your Honda motorcycle dealer, and that means it's time to roll up big savings. You can save $100 to $1,000 on selected models. Apply these savings to your down payment or get cash back from Honda. But hurry, Honda's rock and rebate is good for a limited time only. Act now and save big at Grady Miller's Honda, the upstate's number one in motorcycle fun. For each other makes your June entertainment. HBO Movies, the best and the brightest. Exclusive HBO Pictures. HBO Originals, big event music, big name comedy, big deal series. HBO Sports, legends in their own time. Add Max for the most movie exclusive. Star salutes, the wettest laughs on TV. Add it up, two great channels, 185 different choices. Call your cable operator and ask for the HBO Cinemax combo. Been a great tournament in Paris at Roland Garros Stadium, and now the women are on to the semifinal. And tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, you can check in with the French Open. Martina Navratilova and Chris Everett will play in the semifinals. That's tomorrow, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, the French Open on ESPN. 23, Rob Bertman, who is such a great assistant coach at Miami. All right. And that's Sandy Bergman, once a Miami fan. And that's, I uh, believe, where that championship ring is from. Got that Bayou Bingo right there on the sweatshirt, the Fighting Tigers. Go to the bottom half of the third inning, number nine man, Rob Hartwig, senior from Torrance, California. He's 21 years old. He's got excellent speed. Hitting only 259. If he gets on, he's the leading base stealing threat for LSU. 41 stolen bases. Had only one hit in the ball game. That was a two out double by Jack Voigt back in the first inning. Torrance, California, the home of former big leaguer Bart Johnson. Sam, get a look at Sibahar's fastball. See, really tried to establish the control of that pitch, and he's got a good live fastball. Missed outside. John Sibahar. Had a good year for Arkansas. 11 and 1. 11 and 2, I should say. With the loss against Texas. Hardwing is struck out. The pitch foul tip. Skeels holds on. And Sibahar picks up his third strikeout.
see right here, Andy Skeels hangs on to that foul tip for strike three. Back to the top of the order for LSU. Andy Gailey, the second baseman, takes a pitch low. Gailey, a couple of singles. He's got good speed if he gets on. Good eye. Stolen 21 bases. Down is 2-0. Oh. Cunningham, the shortstop, is on deck. One man out here in the bottom of the third. The pitch misses. Where's number four? And ever since he started playing the game, of course, four is the scorekeeper symbol for second base. The only number Andy Gailey has ever worn since he started playing down in New Orleans. Sebahar pitching three and one got the fastball over. Came back against Papa John from three and zero oh with three straight fastballs. And junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma, John Sebahar. Took a little off and missed. Gailey walks. Third base runner for LSU in the ball game had a double in the first, a walk to Terry Bell in the second. And now Gailey with a one out walk here in the bottom half of the third. Gailey with good speed. Cunningham handles the bat pretty well. He made the South 2 Regional All Tournament team. Nickname Opie. Because he looks like Ronnie Howard. <laughs> Gailey with a good lead at first. Pitches over the outside corner at the knees. Sebahar seems to be mixing the speed on the fastball, Jim. And I don't know if that's by design or if that's just because when he gets behind in the count, it looks like he has a tendency to, as we mentioned a while ago, aim the ball, just try to guide it instead of rear back and just let it go, let the movement take care of itself and challenge the hitter. Gailey with a good lead at first. He's holding. Fastball just missed. Tim Brando is alongside the LSU dugout. Tim? Between innings, Sam and Jim, Skip Bertman talked to his team about detecting something out of the stretch in the motion of the pitcher from Arkansas. He'll cross the plane when he comes home, so the Tigers should automatically go when they see that. Otherwise, he's going to come to first, as he does right there. And he has him picked off. Eklund's throw to the shortstop. Cisco is yeah. in time. He puts the tag on Andy Gailey. And there are two men down. Well, great timing, Tim Brando. You know sooner than talked about that move. You see right here, Sibahar picks the leg up, does not cross back behind the rubber. And then the accurate throw by Troy Eklund. We'll talk about that and then later on in the game. Get a shot from first base of what Tim mentioned with a left-hander crossing the plane. Two men down, nobody on. Cunningham pushes the bunt up the right side. He's got a chance to beat it out. The toss, not in time. Perfect bunt by Dave Cunningham. He drew the first baseman way over, and Sebahar a little slow covering the bag. Cunningham beats it out. Watch the way he falls off the mound right here. Actually in good position to field the ball, but a perfect bunt by Cunningham, and now his speed obviously greater than Sebahar. Sebahar does not get over to the bag in time. Just not blessed with the speed to do it. So a two-out bunt single. Puts a runner at first with Jack Boyd, who's just having an outstanding series for LSU. Five for 11 with four extra base hits, two doubles and two triples. Cunningham is leaning back towards first base on the delivery by Sebahar. Yeah, he's got him a little. He's freezing him over there. You know, Sam, when a pitcher runs over to cover first, ideally, you want to go toward the foul line, about 10 feet from the bag, and then begin to run parallel to the base and that's the reason right there Sibahar was not in position to catch that ball. Cunningham has stolen 14 bases this season. Pitch on the inside corner for a strike count one and one to Jack Boyd. So if they put something on Boyd has been making good contact at the plate. Right now, Cunningham hasn't been able to get a good lead on Sebahar. Two men out, bottom half of the third. There's no score in the ball game. Fastball is fouled off the right side. Got one and two to Jack Voigt. 
See, when a left-hander picks his leg up right there, now if he crosses that front foot back behind the rubber, he automatically has to go to home. If he were to go to first base in that instance, that would be a balk, and that's what Skip Furtman is trying to coach his base runners to do. Once that foot crosses back behind the rubber, take off. So I mentioned in Patterson's move, he hangs the leg perfectly. So a runner can't read whether he's going home or to first. Time is called. Voigt steps out. Outfield playing Voigt straight away, deep in right field. Voigt lined the base hit in the right center, legged it into a double. Good hustle back in the first inning. Over first, and Cunningham is back. This is borderline right here. But he keeps it on the home plate side of the rubber. Not a balk. Count is one and two on Jack Voigt. And again, the throw over. It's a big gap between the first baseman, Faulkner, holding the bag, and the second baseman, Kelly Zane. He's pulled way over. Zibahar, pitch out, skills, throw down, and heading back to first is Cunningham, and the ball is dropped by Eklund. Right behind you. So Cunningham went about a third of the way, saw the throw would beat him, stopped and headed back. Well, that's heads up on Cunningham's part. He knew as he saw the pitch out, they had him by a long margin, so his best shot is getting a run down. And there the return throw from Cisco, I think, gets him right in the back of the helmet. Just so glanced off the helmet. You see where Eklund, he was in good position to receive the throw. Cisco did not throw the ball to the inside part of the baseline, which, of course, he would want to do in that case. And Skeels made a heads-up play by recovering the ball as it bounced away off the base runner. So Cunningham is back at first. Count remains two and two on Jack Boyd. Two men out. Here in the bottom half of the third, no score. LSU and Arkansas. Fastball is fouled out of the ballpark. Now on the right side, Tim Brando again alongside the LSU dugout. What's happening, Tim? You may have noticed the indecision there by both the runner and the batter. And then Skip Bertman went out onto the field to talk with Voigt as well as Smoke Laval. He says no question about it. The Arkansas staff has picked up on the Tigers' signals, so they have now switched it around. They've gone to a different pattern of making their signals to both batter and base runner in this case. Cunningham the lead at first. The 2-2 pitch to Voigt is inside. Now the runner will be going with two men out. The count full. Cunningham has got good speed. And what Arkansas does on a 3-2 count with the runner going, they'll move the first baseman, Eklund, behind the runner, get him in good fielding position right away. Big pitch from Sebahar to Voigt. Inside, he lost him. Voigt walks. It's the third walk issued by John Sebahar. Well, he averages over five a game, but nevertheless, with 11 and two record, he's still been effective. But always a danger signal. You know, you walk two guys like he did this inning, even though they they nailed Gailey at second base, and then Cunningham comes up with a bunt. But sooner or later, those base on balls catch up with you. You know, somebody will bloop one in, excuse me, Sam. Somebody will bloop one in, and the pitcher will say, eh, guy got a lucky hit, but it's the base on balls that he put right. on there that ended up costing him. And throughout the series, the teams that have struggled in Arkansas has won in the game against Texas. The walks have killed them. Here's the big slugger, Greg Faulkner. Takes a strike. Last time, he was cutting and slashing at the first pitch, and he grounded the third. Faulkner. See, with runners on base, overall, he came into the ball game hitting 340. Just one for 10 thus far in the series. And they need his big bat. He's the power man with Joey Bell not in the lineup. 
Pitch low and inside. Faulkner with 80 hits, 18 doubles this season, 12 homers, 63 RBIs. Down is one and one. Two men on, two men out. Fastball hit deep to center field. Back goes Moore. He's there and makes the catch. So the side's retired, and again, with a runner in scoring position, Faulkner makes the final out of the inning. Two walks, a base hit, but Sibahar works out of trouble. We go to the fourth. Arkansas and LSU, no score. One word distinguishes the American Express card from the others. Member. And membership has its privileges. Now I left my prescription medicine at home. Don't worry. Global Assist can help. Thank you. Oh, honey, it's a real find. Let's go for it. <gasps> to apply for membership, look for this display and take one. Wake up. I could run off the road and you wouldn't know the difference. I can't stay awake. Here, revive with Vibrin. Vibrin helps wake you up. Government-appointed experts confirm it's safe, effective. Revive with Vibrin. Listen to the sound of a closer, smoother shave. Williams Electric Shave sets up my beard. So my shaver shaves closer, and I get a smoother shave. Listen to Williams Electric Shave. Mm. The sound of a closer, smoother shave. It's like getting it straight from the horse's mouth. Television's most comprehensive thoroughbred racing report delivers all the latest news and highlights. Join ESPN in the Winner's Circle every Thursday at 6.30 Eastern. Everyone wants to be a winner, but winning takes hard work and a lot of discipline. I know one thing. Drugs never made a winner out of anyone. They just make you a big loser. I'm not going to let drugs get in my way. I'm having too much fun for that. I know I'm a winner. I've said no to drugs, and I'll say it every day of my life if I have to. Why don't you say no, too? After all, you can't be a hit when you're high. Something to think about from the NCAA. We'll go to Sports Center after this game and then come back to Rosenblatt Stadium for Game 10. Florida State and Texas in an elimination game. Joe Morgan will join me for that one, so stay with us. Our coverage of the NCAA College World Series continues. Brought the tournament championship game. Should there be an undefeated team? Could be Saturday night. If not, it could be Sunday night. Top of the order, Dan Campbell, the left fielder. Fouls it. Surfer Dan. Heard of Surfer Joe. Yeah. Being from California, that's one of his hobbies. Palos Verdes. in the first inning was thrown out stealing the only base runner for Arkansas thus far against Greg Patterson good breaking pitch strikes him out three strikeouts for the left-hander Greg Patterson a Sibahar has established the fastball not throwing too many breaking balls Patterson on the other hand and these are all called from the bench by Skip Berkman has shown good command of that curveball he walked the leadoff hitter and then he's mowed the rest up and down Here's Randy Bob. And Arkansas could sure use his bat to come alive. Hits it high in the air, right field. Wind carries it out to Jack Voigt. Makes the catch, two men down. Patterson working easily on the mound. Threw 120 pitches in the game against Florida State. When he pitched nine and a third, he has been absolutely outstanding for LSU in postseason play. Two complete game victories in the regional, and then went nine and a third to pick up the win against Florida State in game two of the College World Series. Breaking pitch. Remember I said at the top of the show, the left-hander that had his cap cocked just a little bit yeah. more would probably be slightly more effective, and he's and been just a little more effective than Sibahar. I got you. Got that baby tilted toward third. Breaking ball to Jim Kramers. Two hops to the second baseman. Gailey handles it easily, and the sides are tired. One, two, three. Patterson has faced the minimum 12 batters through four innings and allowed no hits. We go to the bottom of the four. Be 
right back, Pop. This bud's for all that you do. Hey, Pete. Come here. This year? Hey, my glove. I found out Pop worked overtime to pay for it. He was always knocking himself out to give us something better. Sounds a lot like you. Budweiser, the king of beers, hey, Pop. salutes everyone who's ever worked for more than just a paycheck. Thanks. I think that's my line. This bud's for you. Now you can have the confident feeling of dryness you get from Sure Antiperspirant with something you've never had before. A bold, rugged, outdoorsy scent. New Desert Spice. Leave it to Sure to add new spice to your life. Now you can have the confident feeling of dryness you get from Sure Antiperspirant with something you've never had before. A light, baby-fresh fragrance. New Powder Dry Scent. Leave it to Sure to keep you powder dry all day. See the uh, comparisons between these two teams. Arkansas has won 51 games, LSU 48. LSU's batting average much lower than Arkansas. Well, they can score some runs, and they've hit some home runs, especially with Joey Bell in the lineup. He's not at the World Series. And LSU with a few more stolen bases to make up for the overall batting average uh, that's down at 285. And it all boils down to a 0-0 tie, because both the left-handers have had good command of things. Sibahar a little more shaky than Patterson, but the numbers on the board are the same, and that's what's important. There's the first baseman, Pete Bush. Three for nine thus far in the series. Sophomore. Hits it hard to second base. Right there is Kelly Zane. A little wide on the throw, but Troy Eklund stays with it. Leadoff man is out in the bottom half of the fourth. Sebahar has thrown 59 pitches thus far in the ball game. 34 for strikes, 25 for balls. See his cap slightly cocked, but not quite as exaggerated as mm -hmm. Patterson. Left hand flavor to it, that's what's important. Breaking ball in the dirt to Richie Vasquez. Think Third of, baseman. Think if Vasquez and Robin Ventura could play on the same team. They nickname him Freeway, as I yeah. mentioned, because he hit a home run that hit a truck going down the freeway. <laughs> and then Ventura, his nickname's got to be Highway. Ventura Highway and Vasquez Freeway. Fastball foul back. Vasquez with that big swing. He's got 16 doubles this season. Came into the game hitting 289. Series. He's a junior from South San Francisco. 21 years old. John Sebahar under control in this ninth game of the College World Series in game three against Texas. He was gone in the second inning. An inning and two thirds. About four hits. Walk three, gave up four runs, all four earned. Did not get the loss in that game. Uh, the loss went to Tim Peters, who relieved third pitcher used in that ball game for Arkansas. So his record for the season, 11 and one. Behind three and one on the count to Richie Vasquez, the third baseman for LSU. Just caught the outside corner. Oh, yes. Having a good time down the bullpen. That's how you keep your sanity when you're a relief pitcher. <laughs> Try to come up with something to do down in the bullpen. Hit high and deep to center field. Again, Moore going back. And he's there. Boy, did he go back beautifully on that ball. Rod Moore, fine center fielder for Arkansas, turned his back to home plate and went back well. And running down, a fly ball hit by Richie Vasquez. A good outfielder as well. As soon as the ball is hit, they've got that instinct. You saw him for a moment take his eye off the ball. And they've got that instinct to go back and judge exactly where it is. And you see him turn around in perfect position. Gary Maddox, one of the best I've ever seen at doing that. Find the ball, of course, Willie Mays. 
the most talked about from that regard. But the outfielders that can find the ball, go back, turn around, it's in their glove. Umpire Randy Crystal trying to find the back line of the batter's box. Here's Terry Bell. He drew a walk his first time up. Slow curveball misses from Sibahar. LSU has had two base hits, a double and a bunt single. They've gotten three walks, but they failed to capitalize. Pitch on the outside corner. Got a runner in scoring position in the first inning. Runner in scoring position in the third. Both times, the cleanup man, Craig Faulkner, made the third out of the inning. Curveball to Terry Bell. That's the first one he's seen. To Sibahar. Sibahar was throwing him straight stuff his first time up. Standard John Sibahar. All tournament team in the regional. Started and won two games. You see him begin to change his pattern a little more the second time through the batting order. Started to throw a few more breaking balls. Here's a look at his motion. Now I would think he's a good high leg kick, but right here. He gets that arm in the high position. Doesn't really generate the kind of power he could uh, with the with the fast arm action right there. Deuces across and Terry Bell stays alive by following it back. And I would think scouts at the College World Series, they look at players in two ways. They'll look at a guy like Sibahar and say, OK, we can get him and we think we can improve on his mechanics. He's already proven he can be a winning pitcher. Maybe we can get a little more out of him already than what he's showing. 2-2 Two -two to Bell. Change up. Struck him out. Good pitch by John Sibahar. He liked it. Goes to the dugout smiling. End of four. The left-handers are dominating things. There are no runs. Only two hits in the ball game by LSU. We go to the fifth. In game nine, no score. This is a Nation's Business Update with Lee Thornton. R.J. Reynolds is trying to reduce its workforce, offering early retirement to 2,800 employees. President Reagan is off to the Economic Summit in Venice. Trade and international security are expected to top the agenda. And all Nippon Airways is threatening to reconsider its relationship with Boeing. The aircraft company apparently irked ANA by making a late delivery of two wide-body 767s. More tomorrow morning on Nation's Business Today. Women were kind of a mystery to me until I started using Brute Strength. Brute Strength deodorant. All the protection you need with the great smell of Brute. Time to curl up with a good mystery. Brute 33 deodorant and antiperspirant with Brute Strength. When his team, the El Segundo Eagles, lost the 1970 state final, George Brett didn't lose his desire. He didn't give up because George Brett has always had a will to win. And he's always had a Wilson. I'm Carl Grant. And I'm Errol Comer. Thursday on Nation's Business Today, how to conquer your fear of flying. The premiere episode of Business Travel Tips. A new weekly feature starting Thursday on ESPN. Well, they're not at the beach. And I'll tell you, the baseball coming up to the plate doesn't look as big as the beach ball. That guy's got a copy of my fastball. <laughs> what do you say, Dean Chance on there? No scores. We go to the fifth inning. Andy Skeels leads it off against Greg Patterson. Patterson has faced just 12 men. There's the sign. Fastball, curveball, location. Skeels, the fine catcher for Arkansas, takes a strike. I get into some friendly debates with Skip because, of course, I, I like to see the pitcher and the catcher call the game, but I can appreciate his thinking from a college coach uh, standpoint. We'll get into it here in a minute. Skills fouls it. You know, he feels like he can tell Patterson's mechanics. So if he's throwing like the curveball down and in and he's out, you know, getting it too far in the dirt, he will call for a fastball up and away. He'll work with the pitchers mechanically as much as he will work to hitters' weaknesses. And I can see where that would be a method of sort of teaching a guy to pitch right along with trying to win the ball game and the catcher as well. Down is one and two to Andy Skeels. Breaking pitch in the dirt. Goes back to the screen to count two and two. Andy Skeels, a senior from Thousand Oaks, California, was born in New Zealand. Father is a minister in Los Angeles. He's nicknamed the Sultan of Sleep because <laughs> he likes to relax. <laughs> Fastball 
this is not count as full as Patterson pitching very carefully in the cleanup man. I don't know if we mentioned Skeels was drafted by the Padres. Mm -hmm. I think that means strike right there on three <laughs> and two. Fastball just missed up high and a leadoff walk. Second base runner of the game for Arkansas. Second walk issued by Greg Patterson. He walked the leadoff man in the ball game, Dan Campbell, and Campbell was thrown out trying to steal. Well, he had retired 11 in a row up until then. Of course, he walked Campbell, like you mentioned, and now he's already over his average. Average is about one and a third walks per nine innings. Now, Kelly Zane handles the bat very well at the plate. Let's see what Arkansas does with the leadoff man on. Faulkner has taken signs from Skip Bertman and is aligning the defense with those signs, letting everybody know. Second baseman Andy Gailey is way in as they look for a bunt. Look at this. Look where Gailey is coming in. Gailey is charging in for the bunt. What a defense they put on. Gailey, the second baseman, charged along with the third baseman, Vasquez. I'll tell you, either Gailey's got some great dental insurance or Skip Bertman has no doubt that he's got Norm to Brian sign. Look at this. I've never seen a play like that. Backfield in motion. Wow. Certainly left second base wide open as the first baseman held the runner. And Zane squared the bunt also. Let's see. Zane pushes the bunt. This time no defense was on. Patterson making the backhand stab. Throws to the first baseman Bush. And a good sacrifice bunt laid down by Kelly Zane. Moves Andy Skeels up in the scoring position. Good bunt by Kelly Zane. It's obvious Bertman knows this is going to be a low scoring game. Both these left handers have things under control and he was going to take one shot at coming in and if Zane did bunt the first pitch knocking down Skeels at second base keep him out of scoring position. Now Troy Eklund has the job of trying to bring in the run for Arkansas. First man they've had to second base in the ball game. Sophomore from Kansas City Troy Eklund. Has some power takes a curve ball. Up high. One man out. We're in the top half of the fifth inning. Game nine of the NCAA College World Series, an elimination game. The winner will play again Friday night. The loser will head home out of the tournament. Fastball hit hard. Deep right center field. Back goes Boyd. It's over his head. One bounce against the fence. Around third in scoring is Steele. Eklund goes to second with a double. And Arkansas. With its first hit of the ball game, has the first run of the game. The Razorbacks lead it one to nothing. Well, the old leadoff walk percentage fights Greg Patterson right here. Fastball right down Broadway, and good swing by Eklund. You've heard us say it before. Most of these college hitters have done a great job of taking the pitch the other way, and Eklund shows good power. With the wind blowing the way it is today, hits that ball one hop to the fence. Boyd had no chance on that high line drive. Here's the shortstop, Mike Sisko. Takes high and away. Eklund, the runner at second, one man out. Sisko has had only one hit thus far in three games in the College World Series. It's a fastball for a strike. Arkansas lost to Texas 13 to 6 in game three bounced back in game six of the series to beat Georgia five to four now playing in game nine nicely spaced out for the Razorbacks fastball misses Cisco looking down for the sign saw Cisco's graphic there with men in scoring position. Of course, his biggest at bat in this series was the last game he was hitting with the bases loaded against Chris Carpenter from Georgia. And Arkansas came back to win that game. Got blown away in that at bat. Fastball hit on the ground. Gailey goes over. It's by him in the right field. Around third is Eklund. He'll score. And Arkansas has a 2-0 lead. 
the ball that the second baseman Gailey was going to handle and it got by him. Andy Gailey has had a great series defensively, but right here with a man in scoring position, you got to knock the ball down if you're a second baseman. Dive, do anything you can to keep the ball in the infield and keep Eklund from scoring. So he Arkansas, didn't do that. Excuse me, Sam, and it went under his glove and it cost him a run. Arkansas coming alive. A walk, a double, and a ground ball single. And here's the third baseman, Don Thomas. Still only one man out. Arkansas with a 2 0 lead here in the fifth inning. Cisco the runner at first. Runner goes. Pitch is foul. Hit and run put on by Coach Norm DeBryan. Cisco and Andy Gailey talking about that last ground ball. Called the base hit. But one of those balls that the second baseman should have had, or at least should have knocked down, as Jim mentioned. Moved to first. Cisco back. Outfield shading Don Thomas a little towards right center field. Yeah, even if he didn't catch that ball, that was not the key mistake Gailey made. It was not making the effort to knock it down. Pitch is bunted foul. That pitch almost hit Thomas in the leg. It was that inside. Got the bat on it in self-defense and bunted it foul. There you see Patterson's leg kick. See, he comes straight up. Similar to Jerry Kuzman's, who had a great move, taught it to Steve Carlton. That way the runner could not draw a bead on whether you're going to first or whether you go home. Just kick that leg straight up and hang it there. Mike Sisko, the runner. Curveball. Taken for call strike three. Thomas is struck out on a smooth curve that broke in on the outside corner. And there are two men down. Fourth strikeout for Greg Patterson. Men down, and here's Rod Moore, the center fielder. Shown us some fine defense this afternoon. Thus far in the series, has had four base hits. I would think right here, if Cisco can draw a bead on Patterson's move, he's going to try to steal second with two out because even if he's thrown out, Rod Moore would be an excellent leadoff hitter for the Razorbacks next inning. Patterson delivers, which is bunted into the air behind the plate. Faulkner gives chase, but can't get there. And out of our picture, underneath, underneath to the screen, to Craig Faulkner, a senior catcher, played in the College World Series last year. He's used as a DH. Had a bout of food poisoning the other night. Yeah, he's had a tough week. Struggling with the bat and at the plate. Got to give him your no list. Pun intended. Yeah, you got. <laughs> you got to give him your list of restaurants to go to. <laughs> a one pitch fastball missing outside. Well, he could talk to Richie Vasquez. That's one of his hobbies. I like that combination: running the beach and eating at fine <laughs> restaurants. Which do you do first? <laughs> Richie could tip Faulkner off on some good restaurants, prevent that food poisoning. Pitch is high. Count is two and one. There's the third base. There's the third sacker. Freeway Vasquez. I love that. Arkansas with two runs in on two hits. Here in the top half of the fifth inning, leading LSU two to nothing. Fastball down low. Rod Moore trying to set it up for the top of the order. Dan Campbell is on deck. Rod Moore in his second year at Arkansas. Transferred from Seminole Junior College after his freshman year. Runner goes. Pitch is popped up behind the plate. Now side of the plate. Faulkner with the mask off makes the catch. So the side's retired, but a walk and two base hits. A double and a ground ball single. And Arkansas has broken the scoreless duel between the left-handers. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Arkansas leading two to nothing. I'm Tom Watson. I write for Golf Digest as a plane editor along with Jack Nicholas, Tom Kite, and Bernhard Langer. 
We concentrate on offering you a level of professional instruction in print you just won't find anywhere else. Golf Digest brings you every shot in the game, every situation, every strategy, taught clearly and explicitly by the best teachers and players in the game. And remember this, Golf Digest instruction in print isn't like a lesson you listen to and hope you'll remember. You have it, any time to reread and refer to and review, to show to your partner and hide from your opponents. Whatever, it's yours to keep, and you'll use it. Call toll-free 800-372-3000 for a year of Golf Digest, only $12.77, 46% off the newsstand price, and you'll receive as a bonus tips from the tour free. Call 800-372-3000 now. Be a winner. Read Golf Digest. The years of Williams were very exciting years for me. They were very, uh, I think, considering it was only a four-year period, I went through as many changes as I probably ever have. When I went to college, I remember telling my freshman roommate that one of my major goals in life would be to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated, which he just couldn't comprehend. I can hardly believe I said it myself now, but that was how I felt at that time. I had to change my goals after all my injuries and dropped out of athletics, which had been so important. I was very grateful that Williams could launch me the rest of the way and give me the basis for a good career. It certainly gave me something that would carry me beyond athletics, uh, which was a good thing since the athletics ended up sort of burning out an injury. Um, but they very, college very much did that for me, uh, set me up for the rest of my life. This message furnished by the NCAA. To the bottom half of the fifth inning in game nine of the NCAA College World Series, Arkansas leading two to nothing. Mike Papa John, the center fielder, leads off. It's a deep to center field, but Rod Moore right there. Boy, he's a smooth looking outfielder, that Rod Moore. Just loops back easily. You don't have to be blessed with great speed to be a great outfielder. Remember, years back, there was a center fielder who played for the Detroit Tigers, Bill Tuttle. Not blessed mm -hmm. with great speed, but the ability, as soon as the ball was hit, Mickey Stanley's another one that comes to mind have that knack of going right to where the ball comes down. Left fielder Rob Hartwig takes the ball. He's the number nine man in the order for LSU. But they'd like to have him on. He's got good speed. And with the top of the order coming around, LSU trying to get back and get something going. Good fastball from Sibahar. This game could come down to some of LSU's superstitions. They've got the rabbit's foot in Skip Bertman's pocket, the voodoo doll on the bench. The question is, did Papa John put two limes in his cheek before the game? That's his superstition, right? Bunt up the third base side. Thomas bare hands the throw in time. Fine play by the third baseman, Don Thomas. Went for the bare hand play and made it perfectly. Well, that's got to be the gem defensively by a third baseman so far in this series. Normally, when the ball is moving, you try to field it with the glove hand. The famous shot to Brooks Robinson, the ability to field it with the glove and then throw almost in one motion. But Thomas gambles here with the bare hand pick, off balance throw, almost loses his cap, and accurate right on the money. Boy, that's a great play. Two men out, back to the top of the order, Andy Gailey. Gailey walked last time but was picked off. And that pick off is a big play. Well, you know, as much as we talk with Skip Berkman, and he is a great teacher, great instructor, we talk about calling all the signs, the location, the plays they put on, but that object right there is what it comes down to. You know, what they're hoping will pull them through in this game, superstition. <laughs> Got to be a combination of each in there somewhere. Talked about that pickoff play being a, a big one back in the third inning. There's the voodoo doll. <laughs> right now... LSU hoping to turn things around. Love it for good luck. Good pitch from Sibahar. Count is two and two. Gailey with one out walk was picked off. And Cunningham had a bunt single. Voigt walked. And Faulkner flied out to end the inning. That pick off a key play for Arkansas. Razorbacks leading 2-0. Fastball foul back. 
Two men out here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Guess what surprised us about that play in the top half of the inning when Gailey didn't get to that ball is that he's such an outstanding defensive player. He's not made an error in the series. Two two from Sebahar. Base hit up the middle. Third hit of the ball game for LSU. Second time Gailey has been on. They've had a double by Voigt, a bunt single by Cunningham, and now the single up the middle by Andy Gailey. Gailey's got good speed. LSU trails by two. Cunningham, good man with a bat, comes to the plate. I would think right here with two outs, Sam, he's got to be thinking stolen base. He got picked off, as you mentioned last time. He's had a chance to read the move. Skip Berkman right now not flashing any signs. Maybe Gailey already has it. Sebahar throws the first. Done a good job of freezing the runner, not allowing the runners to get a good jump on him at all. Shortstop Dave Cunningham. And neither of these pitchers, Patterson or Sebahar, deliver the ball to home quickly. But what they do to compensate for that is they both have that very that deceptive leg kick that's hard to read for the base runner. And again, Sebahar goes over. Close play that time as Gailey forced to dive back in. Outfield playing Cunningham straight away. Deeper and right is Kramer. That's because the wind continues to blow across from left to right. Campbell in left is fairly shallow, and Moore in center is straight away. On the outside corner with a fastball. Sebahar has had pretty good control. He's walked a couple, but for the most part, his control has been good and certainly far superior to his effort on Saturday afternoon against Texas. One strike pitch to Cunningham. Fastball hit to the shortstop Cisco. On to Kelly Zane. The side's retired. A two-out single for LSU, but Sebahar retires the side. Go to the sixth inning. Arkansas leading two to nothing. Bartender? Yeah. Uh, give me a light. A light? Yeah. Why, sure. <laughs> oh, I, I've got it. <laughs> no, no, a Bud Light. If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Uh, bartender? Yes? Uh, give me a, oh, let's see, uh, uh, give me a Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Nice call. Thanks. Fuss with shampoo and conditioner? Who needs it? I want to wash my hair and go. And now I can with New Pert Plus. Complete shampoo plus complete conditioner in one bottle. Pert Plus leaves my hair clean, conditioned, and looking terrific. Before to get results this good, I used shampoo and conditioner. No more. Now, with Pert Plus, I just wash and go. New Pert Plus. Shampoo plus complete conditioner in one. All the top players on the LPGA Tour are coming to ESPN Thursday. See live first-round coverage of the half-million-dollar McDonald's Championship Thursday at 4 Eastern on ESPN. Greg Patterson has great control. Here's a look at the number of pitches he's thrown today and good ball strike ratio, but the leadoff walk in the fifth inning to Andy Skeels was the start of the two-run rally, and the Razorbacks lead it to zip. Patterson set to pitch to the top of the order. Dan Campbell leads off for Arkansas in the sixth inning and hits it up the middle. Third hit of the ball game for the Razorbacks of Arkansas. Good speed on the bases now for Arkansas with Campbell, who leads the team with 26 stolen bases. 
Arkansas coming into the game with a 328 batting average. They've shown they've got some guys that can hit. I'm sure it's a little bit of a surprise to Patterson. He has not had an outing like this for a while. Campbell was thrown out trying to steal in the first inning. This is Randy Bob, the number two hitter. Man who handles the bat well was two for three in the game against Georgia. Did not play in the game against Texas. The Terminator, Barry Manuel. He's up a little early. Usually they save him for the late innings. The bunt play is on. Pitch is taken for a strike. This time the first baseman, Bush, came charging in. Gailey went to cover first. Last time in the bunt situation, Gailey from second base came charging in. If I'm Norm DeBrine and Randy Bob's got some bat control, look right here where Bush comes in and Gailey, by going over to first, leaves the whole right side of the infield open. Interesting to see if he takes a shot that way. Bob started to square around. Campbell, the lead at first. Runner goes. Pitch is bunted. Foul. Campbell had a good jump. Bunt and run. Shows the confidence that Norm DeBryan has in Randy Bob's ability, despite that cast on his hand, to handle a bat in a bunt situation. Just to get the ball on the ground. In fact, on that play, good chance for Campbell to go all the way around to third, with both the third baseman and the first baseman charging. Now the LSU infield looking for two. Campbell with a good lead at first. He goes back on the move over by Patterson. In the top half of the sixth inning, Arkansas leading two to nothing. They have the leadoff man on. And the designated hitter, Randy Bob, the batter. Play is on, the pitch out. Fires with two strikes looking for, for the bunt with Bob at the plate. Got a few mind games going on here between Skip Berkman and Norm DeBryan. It's getting down to the last half of this ball game and just a two run difference. And the loser, as we've said, goes home. I mentioned Greg Patterson's rough outing. You might say, well, he's only given up two runs, but here's a guy with an ERA of 1.80. Runner goes. Pitches hit hard to left field. But right at the left fielder, Rob Hartwig makes the catch. And they're going to double the runner off. Campbell is doubled off. He was all the way down to second. Apparently never caught sight of the ball and just kept on running. Campbell is doubled off on the line drive to left field. Rob Hartwig throwing it in. And the double play erases Dan Campbell. What happens, Sam, is see Campbell on the run goes around second base. Here's the catch by Hartwig. And the throw back into the infield. Now Campbell has rounded second. And you see him on the repeat there going back to first base. We'll get one more look at it right here. Now watch Campbell. He's going to round second base. And then all of a sudden after the catch he says, uh-oh, I got to go back and touch the bag. <laughs> Jim Kramer is, bounces it up the middle. He'll get a base hit out of it and keep his hitting streak alive. 15 straight games that Kramer's has now hit safely. Big play there by Dan Campbell, which could have helped his team get another run. By rounding the bag as a base runner, you've got to go back mm -hmm. and touch that base on the way back. He thought about it too late, and of course, LSU comes up with an easy double play. And that's a record base hit for Jim Kramers, his 94th hit of the season, setting a new Arkansas record. Jeff King had shared that record with Kramers. At 93, King had the, set the previous record in 1985. Two men out, a runner at first. Patterson throws over. The catcher, Andy Skeels, is the batter. Skeels walked and came around to score. Back in the fifth inning. Pitch misses outside. Not quite as sharp today, Greg Patterson. Skip Berkman has great faith in Patterson's ability to hit the edges of the plate with the curve and the fastball. That fastball's hit foul. 
Count is one and one. Andy Skeels with good power. You mentioned drafted by the Padres, who also drafted Kevin Garner of the University of Texas. And Texas will be in action tonight playing Florida State in another elimination game. We'll have that game for you, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Good breaking ball from Patterson. Skills set an Arkansas record with 18 home runs this season. Leads the team in home runs and RBIs. Count is one and two. Runner goes, he's picked off. Pushes throw to the shortstop. Cunningham, they make the tag on Kramers. And another good move by the left-hander, Greg Patterson. Sides retired. We go to the bottom half of the sixth. Arkansas leading LSU two to nothing. Now you can have the confident feeling of dryness you get from Sure Antiperspirant with something you've never had before. A bold, rugged, outdoorsy scent. New Desert Spice. Leave it to Sure to add new spice to your life. Now you can have the confident feeling of dryness you get from Sure Antiperspirant with something you've never had before. A light, baby-fresh fragrance. New Powder Dry Scent. Leave it to Sure to keep you powder dry all day. John Sibahar has had the best of it today in the battle between the two lefties. Five innings right there, 83 pitches. A lot of strikes. He's walked three, but he's pitched out of trouble. He's much better command, of course, than he's had. He only lasted an inning in a fraction against Texas. Patterson, on the other hand, is known for that great control, has walked a couple, been behind quite a few hitters. And the sum total of all of that is Arkansas leads it to zip. Go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. LSU has had three hits in the ball game. And Jack Boyd, who steps in as one of them, a double. There's five hits in the series, four extra base hits. The right fielder, Jack Boyd, leading off the bottom half of the sixth inning. The junior from Venice, Florida. Arkansas scoring both runs in the fifth inning. A walk, a sacrifice, a double, and a ground ball single. Producing the two runs. Hit hard to center field, a base hit. Boyd with his sixth hit of the College World Series. Now hitting an even 500. Six for 12 in the series. Well, he's had no problem solving Sibahar today. The double, the walk, and look at once again, the pitch on the outside part of the plate takes it right up the middle. Now the tying run at the plate. And the big guy, Craig Faulkner, came into the game hitting 340 with 12 home runs, 80 base hits this season. Thirty extra base hits, 18 doubles, 12 home runs. Voigt with good speed has good lead at first. Infield looking for two for Arkansas. Nice breaking pitch. Gets the outside corner. Second and short in double play depth. Thomas at third also back. Deep on the hard hitting Faulkner. Missed outside with that breaking pitch. Might get a look at the splinker today, Sam. Bobby Edwards with that sinker split finger that he calls a splinker. Beginning to loosen up for Arkansas. Runner leads away from first. Low curveball misses outside as Sibahar pitching very carefully to Faulkner. has thrown him three curveballs on the outside. First one broke over. The next two missed. Starting ever so slightly to, to slip into that tentative 
state that he was in in his last start. Learning to guide the ball a little. 2-1. Straight hit high in the air to left field. Doesn't carry, though. Dan Campbell is there. The wind taking it back. And Campbell makes the catch. On nights with the wind blowing out, that would have had a chance of going out of here. This is one of the few times that these teams have played in Omaha, or any of the teams for that matter, where you've seen the wind conditions like this. You see the flag right there. Going straight across from the right, the left field corner to the right field corner. Most of the time it's blowing toward left field. First baseman, Pete Bush, with one man out, one man on. Little looper into right field, is going to drop for a base hit. Around second is Boyd, heading for third. Here's Kramer's throw, and he is safe. The ball dropped by the third baseman. It was there, but Thomas seemed to try to make the tag too quickly and never got control of the ball. The ball had Boyd beaten. Now that was a gamble that Boyd got by with. Right here, you see the pitch. Not hit well at all by Bush. Just a little blooper, nevertheless a base hit. Kramer's throw has Boyd by plenty. Thomas cannot hold on to the ball, and the Fighting Tigers get a break right there. Not a good base running play at this stage of the game by Jack Boyd. But the fact that he made it, forcing Arkansas's hand, has now put him in good position. See the ball, See the ball right there in the lower right-hand corner of your picture. Smoke Laval was right on top of it. John Bible, the umpire, as well. First and third with one man out for LSU, their biggest threat of the ball game. Richie Vasquez, the third baseman, takes a breaking pitch for a strike. 343 with runners in scoring position, and he's got a man at third right now. Arkansas defense looking for two. Field is straight away on Vasquez, who asks for time and gets it. One man out, bottom half of the sixth inning. LSU now with two hits in the ball game. Two hits in the inning, five hits in the ball game for LSU. Vasquez looking down, the count is one and one. Smoke Laval flashing the signs, which he gets from head coach Skip Bertman. LSU bench all up on the steps of the dugout. The Tigers try to rally from behind, down by two. Ibahar misses. Down is two and one. Voigt, the runner at third, has good speed. Fly ball of any kind of depth should be able to score him. Fastball on the inside corner. Vasquez didn't like the call. You've heard us say it before. The umpires have had liberal strike zones. Randy Crystal, no exception. They have said to the hitter, when you come up here, you got to swing the bat. If it's close, it's going to be a strike. There's a big pitch for Vasquez. Slow curve on the ground foul. Seen some good pitching performances in this College World Series. Chris Pollock, shutout performance for Florida State. Last night, Lee Plummel for Stanford. Abdulling Kurt Krippner of Texas. Right here, the battle of left-handers. Sibahar and Pollock and struck him out. And Patterson, good pitch, good fastball. That time he had something on it. He's been mixing the speeds of the fastball very well. That's what John Sebar has done such a good job of today, and the reason he's got LSU uh, shut out up to this point. He really throws that fastball. I mean, he had some pop on that baby, and up till now, he's been a little bit tentative to some of the hitters, but he's made that big pitch in key situations. Now we'll have a little defensive strategy here. Dave Jorn, the pitching coach, gathers the entire infield around him probably talking about right here Sam is in the first and third situation just down two runs and they're at the bottom of the order with Terry Bell who's not been a productive hitter Skip Bertman might try to put a little trick play on here with first and third if he gets in a no ball two strike count he might decide 
to send Bush and try to get the runner at third. Boyd try to get him in some kind of a double steal situation. And Arkansas wants to be ready for it. Missed opportunities. Hurt Texas last night against Stanford when they had 12 hits, scored only one run. LSU has wasted a couple of opportunities in this ball game. Right now, first and third, and two men out with Terry Bell, the designated hitter, standing in. Bush, the runner at first. Pitch from Sibahar, swung on and missed. Good fastball. Two singles here in the sixth inning for LSU. Boyd led it off with a single. Bush a one-out single, moved Boyd to third. Fastball outside. Still giving Bell a lot of fastballs to hit. We saw him in the previous games have a lot of trouble with the breaking ball. It was primarily from right-hand pitching, but still Sibahar giving him a lot of fastballs to look at. Again missing high and away with a fastball. It's two and one on Terry Bell. Junior from Shreveport, Louisiana. Nine hits. Not a lot for the LSU ball club for ball game, but they do score some runs tonight. Bale to get a man across home plate. They hit 285 as a team. Runner fake from first, but Sibahar missing the bell is now behind three and one. Causing himself some problems here. Well, if you're Terry Bell right here, you got to say, I'm going to get a fastball to hit. Pitch Have a good swing at it. Pitch well to Vasquez right now behind three and one on Terry Bell. Fastball is popped up, playable in the infield. Kelly Zane, the second baseman on the outfield grass, makes the catch and the sides retired. So LSU wastes a first and third one-out situation. We go to the seventh. Arkansas leading two to nothing. This is a nation's business update with Lee Thornton. Chevron officials say they expect to see oil prices rise, but just slightly over the next few years. On Wall Street, the Dow Industrials gained 42 and a half points. And owners of the Volkswagen GTI should beware. The car is the number one choice of thieves. But Ford Escort station wagon drivers can rest easy. That model is last choice. More tomorrow morning on Nation's Business Today here on ESPN. Blood Thunder. It's revved up and coming at you. stories from the fastest tracks with Bob Jenkins and Larry Newber host ESPN Speed Week Thursday nights at 7.30 Eastern only on ESPN. Texas second baseman Bill Bates was a left-handed hitter throughout his three-year college career. But in game four of the 85 series, Joe McGrain of Arizona struck out Bates on three pitches in his first plate appearance. In his next appearance, Bates batted right-handed for the first time ever in competition, drew a walk, and scored Texas's first run. Bates came up again in the eighth with the score tied at one and the go-ahead run on third. Back to the warning track, can't catch up with it. The run will score easily. Texas has the lead, two to one. An RBI double, right-handed for Billy Bates. Cliff Gustafson, who was Billy Bates' coach. Billy Bates now playing Triple A baseball in the Milwaukee farm system. Joe McGrain now with the St. Louis Cardinals. We go to the top half of the seventh inning. Patterson pitching to Andy Skeels, who was at bat when Kramers was picked off. 
to win the sixth inning. Couple of base running mistakes by Arkansas in that sixth. Uh, the leadoff man on, and then Campbell went too far on that hit and run line drive to left field. Overran second base, had to come all the way back, and was doubled up. And then the pickoff of Kramer's. Getting down to strategy time now, Sam, for both mm -hmm. of the coaches, Skip Bertman and Norm DeBryan. In Bertman's case, you get through Skeels and Kramer's. Actually, Kramer's would not come up to a turn the batting order over, but Skeels in this inning. Then you go through a streak of right-hand hitters. If Patterson gets in any trouble, you can look for Barry Manuel to get up. Over on the other side with Sibahar having an effective ball game, but when we get to the late innings, the right-hander Bobby Edwards and a left-hander the other night that had his career performance, Keith Helton, mm -hmm. for Arkansas. You could look for him to loosen up late in the game. Norm DeBryan. Big curveball from Patterson misses. It's two and two on Andy Skeels. Don't forget, game 10, another elimination game is coming up later on this evening, 8 o'clock Eastern time. It's Texas and Florida State. Richie Lewis, the All-America for Florida State, pitching tonight. Pat Kaisek will go for Texas. Kaisek was drafted in the supplemental phase of the first round yesterday by the Texas Rangers. Should be a good one. Lewis went in the second round. We understand. Skeels takes inside for ball four. Not the Greg Patterson that we've seen or that Skip Berkman has seen. You know, he relies on hitting the spots. We mentioned he gets the signs and the locations, and boy, that looks good when you're hitting the spots. But when you're not, Sometimes you just have to go back. I used to call it the kiss theory. Keep it simple, stupid. You just go back, get the ball over the plate, and get ahead of hitters. Hope they hit it at somebody once in a while. Well, this is what happened back in the fifth inning. Skeels let off with a walk, and Zane sacrificed him. Eklund followed with a double. Cisco a ground ball single, and Arkansas had two runs. Now, LSU has showed us a couple of different bunt defenses. Defensive plays. Let's see what they put on here. Skeels leads at first. Slow curveball is up high. Bush was not charging hard from first, but Gailey was on his way towards first base. Gailey, the second baseman. That was Zane's ability to handle a bat, and if Berkman puts one of those bunt plays on again, the Bryans' uh, choice could be to let him take a shot at the right side. Zane looked like he was ready to square around and bunt. Count is 1 0. Nobody out. Leadoff man is on. Third straight inning. Arkansas has had the leadoff man on. Top half of the seventh inning. Arkansas leading 2 0. Zane squares, bunts it. Patterson turns, tries for second. They got the force. Good play by Patterson. Took his time, made a good throw. Skeels doesn't have great speed. He's the catcher, and Patterson makes the play. That's why I thought DeBrine might try something different than just the straight sacrifice. Right here, Patterson gets Skeels by plenty. Zane bunted the ball too hard. Another look at it is not only bunted too hard, but straight to Patterson. Didn't force him to come off to the side at all. And with all the gimmick plays that Skip Bertman, not really gimmick plays, but the different bunt defenses that he's run, sometimes on offense, if you just try one slug bunt, you know, square around, mm -hmm. look like you're going to bunt and swing away, it can, it can change the other guy's mind about using those kind of plays. Arkansas has not tried that yet. Better speed on the bases now for Arkansas with Kelly Zane. First baseman Troy Eklund takes the slow curveball over. Down is one and one. Gary Manuel. 